Hey everybody, today's video I wanted to go through and cover the problem of getting the batteries initially charged, the initial configuration, and then seeing how you go through those steps. So the first we have to charge the batteries individually before we can connect them and charge them. So that way we want to get them both to 100%, then connect them and charge them and make sure they're equalized between the two batteries. I'll go through the wiring, the configuration, setting up of the Victron based off of the battery specifications, which I'll go through in a, a closer view on the slides, and how I'm going to power the inverter using a power tool replacement cord that I was able to connect directly into the Victron. So I'll show you all the wiring from here in the Victron over to my Lynx distributor, how that's coming back into the batteries, and then how I'm connecting this back to the board, and how I'm connecting the laptop back in with the Victron software. So let's get a close up view and I'll walk you through the steps. Okay, so let's take a look at the battery first. So each of the batteries obviously has a positive and a negative terminal. It has two breakers, which is for the main battery and the battery management software BMS inside. Connections for the battery monitoring software. And then the statistics of you know switches for setting the battery so that it recognizes is this battery one, battery two, et cetera. Run, alarms, and the state of charge. So very basic, as you see like a C level on the base camp. One light, 25% charge. Four lights, 100% charge. What I've done is I've gone through in preparation for the overall design. And I've gone ahead and connected the Victron inverter using four aught cable back into my Lynx distributor. So it makes it nice and clean in the Lynx distributor to come in, connect the negative on the bottom line, the positive on the top, and then I can put a fuse between this connection and the positive bus bar at the top. So you have a negative bus bar, your positive bus bar, and a fuse in there to make sure everything is working well. I've come in with a battery and I've connected the positive and negative cables. I made them a little bit longer because I'm going to use this in the reconfiguration and I'll actually move these cables later on to the outside and connect the other devices on the inside. But for now, for charging the battery, this works fine. So bringing in the cables from the Victron, I have a 400 amp fuse. It's larger than I need, but we're just doing basic charging of the battery. Then I've connected in the battery from each of the terminals using two gauge wire um, and I've put a 100 amp fuse on this side as well. So uh, just an easy connection coming back in and the, the negatives are connected on again this bus bar already but the positives are going through the fuses in case there are any issues to make sure that we can connect in and get that connection between those. All right? And then you can put the cover on top of this to make sure there's no challenges with touching the wires. Um, I won't seal it up but that'll get us connected there. Next, we've come back in and you'll see that I have tied in the interface for the MK3. This will allow me to connect my laptop back into the inverter. I've just had this wired initially into one of the ports inside. Uh, the batteries connect primarily on the positive and the negative side here on the Victron, on your inverter. And then I've gone in and I've used this little Husky 9-foot tool replacement cord that I picked up at Home Depot. It is 14 gauge will handle up to 15 amps. I'm actually going to configure the Victron for just 10 amps coming off the house outlet. The outlet is a 20 amp connection just to make sure that I'm one not over uh, running any additional power through the line but also giving me a way to come back and connect and make sure that I can slowly charge the batteries. And if you look in you can see this cable comes in and I have the, uh, the charge line, the positive, not the positive line, the, the main power line coming in, the neutral and the ground all connected. So those three are already in. And then I have the panel off so that I can show you. So I'll lay the panel back on top. And to configure the battery, um, excuse me, to configure the Victron, you actually have to turn the batteries on first and then turn on the Victron. So we're gonna come down, turn on, this battery. It'll go through its self-checks 
Once it's gone through, it'll light up and it tells me that this battery has two lights or a 50% charge and has the occasional light that'll flash saying that it's run, but there are no alarms. Now I'll turn on the Victron by simply turning on the button here. It goes through its settings, connections, it turns on and says inverter on. All right, so from here, what I'll do is I'll go in and we'll connect up to the laptop, the VE bus, show you how that this connects and I'll show you how to configure the equipment and then we'll go in and start charging the battery. Now let me show you how to get to the Victron Connect software. We'll get this connected back up to uh, the adapter for the MK3, which is your VE bus, the USB. Uh, you'll simply go to Victron's website and go to downloads. And there's an option here to download the Victron Connect app based on whichever software you're going to use, whether you're using it on a mobile device, Windows is what I've done here. The second item I've pulled up, this are the battery specs for the specific EG4 life power batteries that I have that are 24 volt, 200 amp hours. The primary elements we're going to be looking at are here on the screen, the bulk voltage, float voltage, and absorb voltage. Right? And then you have the other specs that you can go through and look at uh, and the different parameters of how the battery is set up. Right? And I have my manual just in case I need from there. So I'll go to the start in Windows. I'll go down to Victron for the software. I'll load Victron Connect. Now at this point, I showed you where I had the battery turned on, the inverter turned on, and I plugged the USB device directly back into my laptop. It takes a moment, the software will go out and look for your Victron inverter. So you see now it's come up with the 243070. So I'll click on that device. And because I already have it connected, uh, it'll come up with the basic stats of what's showing. You can show that it, uh, the battery is currently at 26.29 for the number of amps. And you see that the recommended float and absorb voltage is 28.25 volts. Uh, the state is inverting because we don't have anything connected to it pulling power. We don't have shore power connect. Now that we've looked here, let's go in and configure your software. When you first open it up, it's going to show settings disabled. Click enable settings and the password is Z, Z, Z. Click OK. And now I can see the configuration options. So I'll show you the specific items that I've changed because I did play around with this to make sure it was working before we get started. So in general, you'll come in and see the frequency in the US at 60 Hertz. Uh, I do have it set and you can change this. It starts out at 52, right? But I set this one at 10 amps because I'm going to be using the house outlet and this limits the amount of power that the inverter will draw from the house outlet to then charge the batteries. And so that's all we need here. You can turn on enable battery monitor and it will come back and tell you the capacity, state of charge when finished, efficiency, etc. So let's go back. If you go to grid, uh, coming in and looking at these, all of these are standard and I'm not going to change any of the settings, but for example, the AC load disconnect. So if you're at a campground and for whatever reason, the pedestal is not giving you a minimum of 90 volts of power for your shore power, then the Victron MultiPlus will disconnect. Or if you exceed above another one, uh, if you go above low voltage, this is where it's going to disconnect as well, right? And it's going to connect back. High voltage, so you, here's your two settings for connecting and disconnecting. So if it gets above 140, uh, it will disconnect when it drops down to 135, you're good. So low third, 90 to be able to come back out, it'll reconnect at 97, you're good between 97 and 135 volts. It should be between 110 and 124 usually. Uh, so we're not going to change any of these specs. If I go to inverter, uh, the inverter input is going to be 120 volts, uh, ground relay, um, I've left that one on. This comes in and talks about how it's connected for the neutral, uh, when you've got a PE ground, etc. Uh, I'm leaving the DC settings the same. It defaulted automatically to the settings coming in for the 24 volt system, but 12 volt is slightly different. I'm not going to turn on 
an AES, but I am going to leave turned on Power Assist. So what this will allow us to do with Power Assist, when the, the equipment in the base camp pulls more power, i.e. greater than the 30 amps, and I don't know that it ever would, but if it pulls greater than the 30 amps that is available via shore power, the Victron MultiPlus will recognize here's a huge spike in load. Let me help you out. Let me come in and use the batteries to offset that load as well. And then it will come in and assist from the batteries. When the power draw is less than is needed, the power assist will say, hey, there's more than enough power being provided by shore power and there's still extra that I can use. I'm gonna use that to charge the battery while it's going forward, All right? So we, no changes here, but I'm gonna leave on those two that were set. For the charger, So you come into charger, we're going to enable the charger because we do want it to charge the batteries. It is set up to 52 amps coming back in for the, the battery. Right? And you can go back and look the maximum current charge on these batteries are 100 amps. So I'm actually good on that side. I'm going to leave this at 52. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to change these two settings. So absorption should match the absorption of 28.25. Float is also recommended to be 28.25. So I've set both of those two, and you notice that the inverter, the MultiPlus, comes back and actually changes these two. So I'm going to leave that as is based on what they're recommending with the, the float being at 28.25. Now, the other thing that you can change, you probably want to look at, is absorption time. Because I have two batteries, but they're 200 amp hours each or 400 amp hours, multi, the Victron software will come back and tell you that you need to come back and have 30 minutes for every 100 amp hours. So because of that, I've changed this from the default value of eight down to two hours because I have four times 100, 200 amp hours. So 30 minutes, so that gives me two hours of time for absorption. Uh, you also have to change lithium batteries. So you notice this changes the settings there. So you turn on lithium, come back and verify your settings, charge at 52, 28.35, 25, uh, and I've got the absorption set at two hours. And then we'll leave the rest of these the same, right? And AC input control, I'm not going to use any of these settings, so I'm going to leave all of this as is because I'm not going to make any changes on that side. That's all I need to go through, and you'll hit save for your battery settings. It'll let you save it to your hard drive, and then you can come back out. Now, the one thing that you're going to do before you get started is click this three dots, go to product info, and look to see is there an update for the firmware. If there is, mine is an update. It is updated to the latest. It was at 4.1. I updated it when I first loaded the computer to 4.94. You click on an update, it will download the update. And then after it does the update, you will need to come back and reset any of your settings. All right? So now that we're in here and everything is ready, so the next step is going to be to plug in the power. And let's watch and see what happens for the inverter on that side. Okay, so we're using the software to look at and watch to see what happens on the inverter. I have the GoPro set so that you can come in and see. We're going to simply plug in the outlet. You'll see in the software the change that takes place. I'll move the camera so that you can see closer what happens on the inverter. You can see the inverter switched and on the, the GoPro you can see that it came in the main and it's now doing a bulk absorb. And the software you can see that I now have ACN 1100 watts that are coming in and charging the battery. Right? So we can see that it's going through and doing the charge and we'll let it run as it goes through and gets the battery up to speed. I'll do this with both batteries then I'll come back 
And when I come back, I'll look at tying in both the batteries together and we'll charge and equalize both of the batteries. So we'll do that next. Okay, now that the inverter has started going through and charging the battery, the fan has kicked on to cool off the inverter. And we'll let this run for the next couple of hours. I'll come back and check it. Uh, actually, I'll let it run overnight to 24 hours to see, make sure it's charged. Then I'll come back and reconnect the two batteries, get those connected up into the Lynx distributor, get the uh, fuses, the disconnect switch and the other pieces in place. Come back and show you how I did those. Uh, and then we'll go to the next step. So hopefully this was useful for you. Uh, if you liked it, click like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, as always, feel free to ask in the comments or in the Facebook group. Have a great day.